I'm very honoured to be with three distinguished guests this afternoon, all representing uh, their own views and sharing their own views on the formats that they're producing and creating and how it's impacting uh, the market in Asia and audiences that are wanting more and more different programming here. I'll go through each person. I'd like to start off uh, to my far left is Mike Beal from ITV in the United States, uh, United Kingdom, I'm sorry. Then we have uh, Vivian Yin from China's Star China International. And lastly, Kelly Wright uh, from Keshet International. So we want to kick off fast because this is a short session. And we'd like to also open up questions to you, the audience. If you've been here this morning, you've noticed that there is a pigeonhole technology. If you can see up here, you can post your questions online. It means you don't have to be, um, you have to be uh, confident speakers. You can just post it online and you can put anything up there and we will look at questions after we've gone through some of the presentation today. Ask questions, be nosy, find out anything. This is what you need to use. You go to asiatvforum.com backslash ask. And if you don't have data, you can use the Wi-Fi password there. Please ask questions. It always makes it more relevant and makes it more interesting for all of us here. So first of all, I just want to ask all three of you just to start off by saying, where are formats at in Asia now? What is really, what, how is the landscape changing, Mike? Just the easy question to start with. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, actually, I don't think Asia is entirely different from, from the rest of the world, honestly. I think we're in a period of evolution rather than revolution yep. within formats. We're seeing shows that are uh, using new technologies and new ideas to move um, genres forward, but, but we're not seeing any brand new clever genres. Is that enough? That, and that's true. There's always been this thinking that Asia is quite different, but in fact, audiences want the same sort of content, and they're also wanting to more, see more risky or groundbreaking, that word's used a lot, but groundbreaking content. Vivian, in China, it's the same as well, right? Yes, in China, um, I would say the, um, uh, the whole scenario is changing very rapidly, even uh, more rapidly than we could imagine. Uh, I still remember in MIP format, <clears throat> during this MIP TV, I shared my vision of the whole uh, format industry in China, saying that the broadcasters may seek for the next uh, comedy format, whereas I can give you the latest news that uh, for the next year, there will be 30-something formats mm. uh, on the Chinese screen that's relating to a comedy. Uh, either sitcom or, you know, the shiny floor comedian format. Okay. So you see how s things change rapidly. And also, um, <clears throat> the most talked uh, format right now in China is Where Are We Going That? It is a South Korean format. And uh, it's triggered two type of uh, formats explosion. One is the family-related, family-oriented format. Either, so I, I would say Big Star and Little Star will have its chance in China. Also, it has triggered an, another genre, which has been restrained for the Chinese market for a long period of time, is the outdoor reality TV. Mm. So, uh, no broadcaster would like to take the risk. However, I must congratulate our fellow, you know, <laughs> broadcaster That's Hunan. Cool. They take a risk and they did it. Yep. So uh, next year, uh, there will be more outdoor reality format in China. Mm. Going on, Kelly, Israel has been going powerhouse with formats and Keshet is one of those that are just rocking on. And of course, you're seeing this being really popular around the world and your formats are being taken up. Is the scale, is the scale of these shows a big factor of where it goes in the world and, and particularly in Asia? I think definitely yes, it is. Um, as a broadcaster, Kesh is the number one broadcaster in Israel, we program all sorts of, of things including big shiny floor uh, talent shows and also smaller docu reality type of shows which we're now seeing are having a great pickup uh, in China and hopefully in the rest of Asia. 
So I think just like Mike said, Asia, we don't view Asia differently from any other market, but for the first time, Israeli formats are really starting to travel. We've, we've got, actually got a, uh, one word that links all the programs we're seeing today. It's the word star. It seems star is the, the word of 2013, maybe even 2014. And Mike has a very interesting format to show off. I'd like us to first see the promo for this new program that's doing so well in the UK. Could we please see the promo for Big Stars, Little Star? And welcome to Big Stars Little Star, brand new show in which three of our best life celebrities have been daft enough, I mean nice enough, to share the limelight with their own children. The best thing would be to just say the worst thing, just to get it over and done with. What are you most nervous about? I just think the, you know, large amount of time I spend naked. Do you know what the massive bonus is? <laughs> she didn't mention that at all. <laughs> For the first game, we've asked our little stars some revealing questions about their parents. All the big stars need to do is decide which answer their child gave us. <laughs> she makes me tie Daddy's feet oh, up. There's a game that we <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'm going to say gonna go farting all the time because I just want my boy to say farting on television. Farting. Good stuff. <laughs> Stop flirting. <laughs> I scream mummy's name, she says, hold on, hold on. Just get so excited, might pull our heads off. Why does my child make no sense? <laughs> Time now for our big stars and little stars to go head to head. Which of these does Aiden find the most annoying about mummy? <laughs> Aiden said it's you burning his toast. He doesn't even eat toast. <laughs> Only one pair can make it through to the final. All you've got to do is match as many pairs as you can in 90 seconds. Number six. Number six. Um, yes! Good girl! Come on! Number seven. Where's Number Leo? Five. Number five. Number five, yes! <laughs> Yay! Yay! You're walking away for the charity of your choice with £14,000. Well done, Yo! But also taking home your very own Big Stars Little Star Trophy because you have been a true star. Well, a very family orientated format. Uh, really interesting to watch. I mean, the host is obviously a key part of this as well. But is this a trend that you're seeing in the UK that you need to bring in a different element and maybe it's a time to bring kids back on TV? I think you've hit the nail on the head there in terms of kids being back on TV. I think there's been a fear that um, we, we may be taking advantage of, of, of children on TV, putting them into a show like this. Uh, whereas actually we've put all the power with the kids, so, so we're not doing that. Uh, I think celebrity continues, like linking it to this panel in Asia, continues to be a currency that works very well um, in the UK but, but, but globally. Uh, I think it helps shortcut the audience, they, we can get into the game faster because we don't have to spend time getting to know contestants that are off the street. But also I think with this format specifically, it humanizes our celebrities because it reveals that their, um, their family life uh, and, and we get a little insight and, and actually they are just the same as us. Yeah, so there's a nice connection with the viewer. They're seeing people who they obviously look up to or have seen on TV and living lives that aren't that different. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, and uh, I, th I think what was it, one of the interesting things about this show, which, which will be coming back next year, is uh, uh, celebrities were nervous about it. Obviously, they're putting their kids up on television. Uh, and, and since the show has aired, we've had celebrities contacting us and saying, actually, we've seen it now. We'd like to be on that show. It's a lot of fun. It's family. It's not dangerous. We're not, we're not exposing our children to anything that's going to upset them. And when I was talking to Kelly about scale, this is obviously a smaller show. It can actually move around. It's, it's high impact in terms of entertainment. Adults and kids always work. But actually, it's quite a small show. Yeah, I mean, I think... We see, this is a trend in the UK at the moment, for sure, um, and I think we'll, we'll see it rolling out uh, around the world, is I think we're going to see sort of two levels of show. I mean, Kelly will get onto Rising Star at the moment. We've got these huge shows um, that eat up schedule and eat up budget, 
um, but there's still a desire for other entertainment shows within other areas of the schedule. And um, certainly ITV specifically has seen success with this scale of show, um, and, and Big Stars fits in there mm. perfectly. You were saying that Asia is very much like the rest of the world when it comes to TV. It, do you see an interest in family-based children television coming through Asia? Uh, Vivian tells me that that is the case in China. <laughs> um, just Good. now, I'm very excited about China now. <laughs> um, I, I think more celebrity, I think, is the common theme here. Um, we, we've seen a number of shows go this year, uh, certainly into Vietnam and previously into Korea. Uh, things like pop star to opera star and, and soap star superstar, which takes celebrities and puts them through a talent competition, uh, not, not as big as, as X Factor or anything uh, or Rising Star. Um, but uh, so I, th I think there is a, a common ground here that's, that celebrities are a common currency across the world. Mm. We all have them, um, thank God. And, um, and but I think yes, family, children, um, real life. I mean, maybe it's just a, a turning with the, the financial situation around the world that actually we want to see things that aren't always huge and yep. we just want to be brought back down to earth. You have a very popular format, Come Dine With Me, and it has done so well in the U UK. Is that, when you think about celebrities, is that a show that you think could also work elsewhere? Or is it because there's a certain type of celebrity in the Come Dine With Me, isn't there? There's, there's sort of, they're not A-listers, but they're not nobodies either. Yeah, and, and, and I think the same for Big Star, Little Star mm. as well. Um, it, it, it's a celebration of, of the celebrity, as, as I say, it's a shortcut. And we've seen the celebrity version of, of Come Dine With Me travel. Um, India went on air uh, this year with Come Dine With Me purely with celebrities. Uh, so, but again, it's a, very, it's a very family show. You see them in their houses, you see them cooking. Oh my God, celebrities cook. Who would have thought it? Um, but, but they do, so it, it, it just makes everybody realize that we are all the same. I think for a long time, uh, celebrities in Asia were very much seen only on their means of work. They weren't seen behind the scenes. They weren't actually, you didn't have up close and personal. You didn't visit them in their house. So this new fascination is also brewing a new type of television uh, program or content, which has the curiosity factor, but also the entertainment factor. Uh, yeah, for sure. I, I think um, without pushing too many other people's formats, um, something like uh, um, Through the Keyhole, which yep. has proven so successful on ITV, uh, which isn't one of our formats. Um, it's on the network, but studios don't represent it, and I won't give an advert to the people that do. Um, <laughs> but but it's, it, it's an access piece into, into celebrities' homes, and can you guess the celebrity from where they live, which has proven hugely successful in the UK. So I, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. There is a trend for this. Vivian, moving into China. China has goes through highs and lows, changes, upturns, flips around in terms of what can be made or how it can be made. But is there a push to take different routes and to take risks in programming now in China? Um, I would say uh, we do come, uh, I mean, ups and hills in terms of format development. And uh, still, I would say in China, um, the condition is not that ideal and mature enough for a self-created format. But we would like to take the initiative and uh, we are developing three formats in-house uh, this year. Uh, I would just like to show one of the conceptual kind of promo. It's not yep. exactly the promo to explain how the show is, but uh, it can give you some yep. taste. Actually, let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and can we play the next promo from Star Media, please? When the music is broken, the feeling is not broken. When the wind is broken, the hope is still there. 是创作人的常客，但沉默不是。没有一种困境可以冰封滚烫的歌。
is a new format <coughs> focusing on the original song. We came up with the idea once uh, when we produced the Voice of China for last year, actually. Uh, since there are so many singing talent in China, um, but where is the original song? It is the it is the uh, origin of the whole musical industry. So we think since there's no particular format in the world, around the world, focusing on the song, why not to create ourselves? So we, we, we came up with the idea, but really it is a tough process for us to develop the format. And uh, we have been through you know, many twists and turns in terms of developing. I cannot uh, tell it uh, because of time uh, constraint. But the thing is that it is focusing on the original song, but the difficulty is how to combine um, the song and the, the singer-songwriter together to create the uh, emotion uh, in the, among the audience. So we finally adopt uh, a mechanism of creating the physical album in the musical industry. So the full celebrity uh, mentor will each act as a supervisor of an original album. They're gonna pick up original songs uh, from the singer-songwriter who would present the song themselves. And then, uh, during the process of the, pro uh, of the program, uh, they will compete with, against each other to be the first single and the second single of the, of the album. In the grand finale, uh, each mentor will bring two songs out of their original album, I mean the first single and the second single to the grand finale. So there will be uh, eight songs all together and they will compete for the song of China, the title. Yeah. Looking at the, the promo, it's, it's got, of course it's in Chinese, it, it speaks Chinese, you know what it is and where it's coming from, but there are a lot of elements there that you could say is also quite Western inspired. Is that where China is at now? They're able to adapt and, de and evolve a lot of these formats when you're in development to have that international look but have a local Definitely. sensibility. Definitely. Um, we all know that the, the album has been received from the historical stage gradually. However, we do have the digital album and we do uh, the the record company, they do release a new album online, perhaps, nowadays. So we will also adopt the new media technology uh, inside the, the show. Say in the second and the third round, we will allow the home audience to upload, to download the, uh, their favorite song and to decide which song is going to be the first single, which will be the second single, to go to the grand finale. So it also uh, combines uh, the traditional uh, TV format and the, the secondary screen together in the show. And uh, I think this is a new trend in yep. terms of global you know, format. So technology, of course, I mean, China has to do some things slightly differently. We, you know, there's certain apps that are only specific to China. There's certain uh, websites that are specific to China. But is that, is that want to connect with, with the program? Is it that want to, to utilize technology to get closer to stars or get closer to celebrities? Um, a part that's really evolving and, and China's and the industry's catching up with that. Um, I think technology is neutral. You know, you can you can definitely utilize the technology to support your show. Whereas, unlike a rising star, Kelly introduced to us, um, it is all about technology. I think that the, the crucial element in the in rising star is the technology to allow the home audience interact with the uh, with the contestants. Um, but uh, it is always a problem, as you all know to vote or to, to make your own decision in China. Uh, whichever in, in using the traditional technology, SMS or the new technology. So I would say for the technology, we would use it to support the show, to create a certain involvement among the audience, but not the, the I mean, the core It doesn't element. influence, yes. yes. Yeah. No. Well, that's a wonderful segue. <laughs> into how audiences can influence a TV program. 
I would like to present uh, the promo for Rising Star, one of the latest shows out of Keshet. Let's have a look at the promo. TV. The contestant is about to start singing live. You grab your smartphone or tablet, and by the end of the song, you have to decide if the contestant will pass or fail. She's just a girl and she's on fire. appears on the screen in front of the contestant. As more viewers vote pass, the screen fills up with their faces and the percentage bar rises. If the judge loves the performance, they are voted worth 7%. It's the viewers who have the final say. Only if the contestant reaches the target percentage of the votes does the screen rise, revealing the audience and judges. Rising Star wipes the slate clean, changing everything we have ever seen in town. Shows. Rising Star. It's a whole new TV experience. It's TV app to you. <laughs> so, talking about scale, that's uh, pretty big, right, Kelly? Look, it is, it's massive. It is doing really well in Israel. Um, it will be premiering in the US next summer. And really at the core of it, as Vivian said, is not just the music, not just the, the, the stars, not the stars, but the talent, but is that connection, that direct connection with the audience. I've, my first question is, what came first? Was it the technology? Or was it the idea of making a new type of talent show? I think as broadcasters, we've all been looking for a way to integrate technology into our TV programs without distracting anyone from what's happening on the TV screen, but rather enhancing the experience for all of the viewers through other screens. So at Keshet, we had our own talent show called A Star is Born, which is, was a standard talent show, was on the air for 10 years, very, very successful. But we just decided that at this stage, when everyone's talking about how the talent show genre is dying, we had to do something to really change the game. In Israel, it's a small market. You know, we have The Voice, we have X Factor, we have our own talent shows. So if we didn't step up and create something new, which is what our audience was also demanding from us, then we, we knew we would fall behind. So um, what we did was we, we looked really at what the viewers at home were telling us about the show. We went out and did a huge survey about A Star is Born, and from this we decided to completely scrap A Star is Born and to create Rising Star. 
Um, the technology was integrated um, through this app, which is very simple to use. You just vote pass or don't pass at every single song of the show. It doesn't distract anyone from what's happening on the big screen, but for our viewers and for our advertisers, it created a complete 360 degree program. And the interesting thing is at a time where TV viewers are fragmented, they watch when they want, this, in a way, brings back family viewing or loyal, loyalty viewing. You must watch at the time right. so, you, so you can interact. That's a really, it's a, like going back to old school, so to speak, when people sat around a TV and watched a TV show. Right, it's live, so it's an event. It's, made, it's definitely event television. And um, because, because of the technology you have, it's spanning generations. So what we're seeing is a draw and an attraction of people, you know, 12 to 34 back to the big screen, which, you know, we were losing those audiences. And especially when with SMS voting, you know, it's just dropped so much in the past few years. And we relied so much on it for Big Brother, for A Star Is Born. Mm -hmm. And we just needed to find a new way to not only monetize um, that voting experience, but also to make it more attractive for the viewers. And if it wasn't free, then, you know, it, it just, they would just keep ignoring it like the other. Yes. So you have to pay to download the app? No, no, it's free. No, it's it is free. free. It's a free experience for viewers. A free experience, but then once you have it, you can, it only works, obviously, during the play. The right, it's live when the show is live. Right. And what it allows viewers to do is to create their own on-demand TV experience. So viewers are deciding completely whose story they want to follow through the end of the season. And just going by, again, back to scale, these sort of shows have core markets that will work, but is it in a way that you can also take it to other regions where it may not have to be so big? Is it the technology can be scaled? The technology can be scaled. It doesn't necessarily have to be scaled because it doesn't matter if there are 100 people voting or a million people voting. It's all about the power of the viewers at home. Um, and in addition, you know, we've sold it straight to series to 20, more than 20 different broadcasters now around the world. ITV being one of them, and you mentioned in the U.S. with ABC, yes. amongst others. So the scale of the show and the, the application of the technology will be a little bit different in every version. Vivian, just looking at Rising Star and what you're seeing in China, is this, what something, is this a type of format that would work in China with the new restrictions, or will it need to be tweaked a bit like there's been some other shows? Uh, well, it must be tweaked. Uh, in order to, you know, to be uh, properly showed in China. Because any, any type of voting, uh, in, especially this direct voting, will be strictly prohibited, as you all know. So um, I, like, I, like, I like the voice of UK. They, do develop, they did develop a new app to create a certain type of audience involvement for the second series. But it didn't help that much because the voice is all about the, the coach, the mentor, and the, the contestants. And this rising star is all about the home audience and the, the contestants. And the judge's role has been minimized, you know. So, uh, but uh, if it won't work in the Chinese market, it has to be adapted uh, in order to... Past. And that is always the challenge, is that you can't, it's, we're no longer a TV audience that you can just carbon copy a format, bring it in, put it on, and it works. There is so much localization now, right down to even the casting of characters. Even um, Top Gear in China, it was a completely different, uh, completely different way of presenting the format. Um, for example, Cars couldn't be seen to be ultra-luxurious. They had to be of the common man. You couldn't have your big Jaguars and Rolls Royce. Top Gear wanted to, Top Gear China wanted to approach it so every person in China could feel aspirational, but also not knocked out of the ballpark when it comes to buying a car. So it's very much, that's what's happening now, isn't it? That yes, the formats are coming into Asia. Yes, there is a huge, interest and appetite for it but mike it already it also takes a lot of development locally doesn't it uh, yeah I, I mean i think it entirely depends on the format mm. uh, i mean again i pop star top star which went to korea was almost the, the same show 
um, uh, we just had holding out for a hero on a new TV, um, which changed because it was celebrity who was playing for people, and so there were there were subtle changes. Mm. Um, but I mean, and I think that's always the case with formats into into any region. Uh, is is yes, we do have to have an element of localization uh, to make it work. Be it celebrities, the voting system, um, the scheduling. I mean, we've uh, come dine with me, which was a daily show in in the UK, has gone weekly yes. in, in many territories because a daily daytime show doesn't work for them. So um, I, I think ever thus in, in that instance, I, I don't think it's been particularly changing with. Um, uh, uh, this day and age, but uh, I think what we're seeing is, is Asia is taking in more more formats than they did mm. they did before. I think that's possibly what we're seeing, which means we're changing more because we're in a different territory. Of course. Before we go to the questions, just one last uh, before we throw it to the floor. I just want to ask one more question to the three of you. What are the trends for next year? What if you picked one? Let's not go through all of them. It could be all and sundry, but. But Vivian, just start off, what trends are you seeing in Asia, in China specifically, that really are meeting a new potential? I think it's a reality TV. It's a reality type of uh, uh, format, uh, which for a long period of time has been untapped in the Chinese market. And uh, where are we going that has opened a new door. So I think for the year uh, coming, there, there will be many different you know uh formats on different themes but all all door reality mm. tv since it's easier for the brands to be implanted into the format and can easily to get advertisement so i think there will be the new trend okay kelly um, we're seeing obviously towards technology and participation in, in Israel and specifically um, and we're finding a very receptive audience in the rest of the world so for us that's the big trend. Yeah, The app is now becoming an integral part right, of not, television. And not just the app but also we talked earlier about basing formats off of popular websites or trends mm. or applications um, which are, are going, you know, are really have a lot of buzz around the world. So, can I quickly have a word? Because our, our, our approach in terms of format developing is different from uh, most of the broadcasters in China. Because we only develop those formats to be fitted into our industrial chain. Mm. Uh, when I, once I shared my uh, insight with the with the you know C21 or someone else, they called it Simon Fuller approach, <laughs> which is uh, you see we have the voice and we need to have the original song to fill the full musical industrial chain. So we are also developing a new format focusing on Kung Fu Star. It's called the Kung Fu Star. Uh, it is original format. We have already secured Jackie Chan, uh, Zhang Ziyi, and uh, another very famous Chinese director, Feng Xiaogang, to be the uh, the judges, and uh, they will each represent a classic kung fu action movie, because we possess the largest uh, Asian's largest uh, film library. Uh, we have Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Jet Li's famous movie back there, all there. So we want to um, to pick up the new kung fu star or action star uh, to refilm those classic okay. movie. Yes. Mike, just lastly, um, what do you think is a trend that you'd like to see uh, really developing further next year? Can I just say, I'd love to see that show. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we'll, 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 Sorry, we'll no. courier it to you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I, I think I mean, this is an easy answer. I mean, I think Kelly's right. I think technology embedded into shows is, is going um, to continue. I think that's a cop-out answer from me. Um, I, I think success is, is going to be a continuing trend. I know that sounds obvious, that you will all want to buy shows that are successful, but I think, um, I think you're going to want to see returning success. I don't think, I, I think in the last five years we've seen a lot of shows that have claimed to be the next big thing, but actually Rising Star being a good example, it, it continued with success and grew, and then uh, the, the territories came on board and, and went with it. We ourselves are seeing um, sort of explosions in our existing formats, interestingly, things like Hell's Kitchen and Dancing on Ice. Um, so, so I think people are returning to shows that have proven themselves uh, and, and therefore can fill the schedule and, and, and be successful for them. 
Okay, I just want to throw it out to the floor. We've got some, uh, some questions here on pigeonhole. Uh, the most here with three votes. You're all very busy out there. Um, I'll read this out. When are you looking at new original programming to commission all? To commission, I, I would like to know who this is directed to, but it may be Vivian. Who asked this question? <laughs> yes, who would you like to direct it to? Okay, oh, let's, okay, right to the floor. Okay, that's cool. So I'll keep reading. What materials are you looking for to prove the concept? And do you look for certain elements in shows? PH. <laughs> Um, uh, materials, uh, obviously, we'd want to see as much of the idea as possible. Uh, it's, it's to your benefit as well in the sense of the more you've developed it, the, the more you can keep control of, of your rights. You come to us with a base idea and, and we're going to end up developing it, which means we're going to end up wanting more parts of it. Um, but we'd certainly, if it's a game, we'd like to see the breakdown of the game. If it's a reality show, we'd, we'd like to see a concept reel. Your, your, your concept reel was beautiful. Um, and I don't think we look for any specific elements in a show. We, we, we would like original ideas. It's as simple as that. Just to follow I'll on from... One thing. Yes. one thing I don't want to see is, uh, here's my new idea, which is this show meets this show. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Yes, let's, let's go a bit further than that. Um, just to add on to that, do, do um, produ producers and production houses, do they actually have to think of technology from the ground up? Do they need to think about how they can integrate technology? Or is that something that you can work with a broadcaster on? I think realistically we need to think from the ground up. If you try and add it on later, I think we're seeing less of that phenomena at the end of a pitch that says, oh, and there's an app that can go with this. I think we're having to see it embedded into the show, uh, which Rising started. Otherwise, it just won't work. Um, there's one other question here I think is quite interesting. The family themes that are coming through, both China and Korea are developing these sort of shows, and there's a, a format from Korea that's doing very well in China, right, Vivian? Is that something that, uh, like Western families, that working parents aren't spending time with their children, and so the, the TV is trying to bring them together, or is it, all, or is it an alternative to actually seeing families together might inspire more family time? Uh, I think both. I think uh, you're right that uh, the working parents, they, have, they can spare, I mean, very little time with their children. And uh, the where are we going, Dad? The format do, did and uh, still do bring the parents and the, the kids or even the grandparents together to watch the show, probably on different platform. Some watch the TV uh, when it's aired, some may watch it online, you know. But uh, also the, the, the concept, the family-oriented oriented concept, tying the family, rebound the family together. So this is uh, crucial for a fast-pacing society, I think. Uh, not only for China, I think for the rest of the world. And it's interesting that all three of these formats, although they are different in their own way and scale, they each have a family element. So I think if anything to take home this afternoon is that is one of the ties that bind. There's a family connection. There is a connection with generations within family and the entertainment value from different generations in a family and from different age groups. I would just not want you to please Thank our guest today, Mike Beale, <laughs> Vivian Yin, and Kelly Wright. Thank you very much for your time today, and um, see you at the rest of Asian TV Forum. Thank you very much.